NASA's next big space telescope is called the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope. Roman for short. And it will have approximately the same resolution and sharpness as Hubble, but it will have a field of view about a hundred times larger. It will study the mysterious dark energy that we think is currently accelerating the expansion of the universe and will take direct images of exoplanets. Oh, and it's all being built with a massive mirror that was actually intended to point at the Earth on a spy satellite. In January 2011, a phone call was made to explain to NASA that the National Reconnaissance Office, that's the people that run the US's fleet of spy satellites, had some spare mirrors that they no longer needed and wanted to get rid of. These two mirrors were 2.4 meters in diameter, that's the same as Hubble's primary mirror, and were built to look at the Earth for reasons, but had become surplus to requirements. They were NASA's if they wanted them. And oh boy, did they want them. NASA spent a year or so figuring out how good these mirrors were and what would need to be done to reshape them and recalibrate them to look up instead of down. But eventually the plan became to use one of them on Roman, originally known as W First, but now renamed to honor Nancy Grace Roman, the first female executive at NASA. Its main goals are to try and give us some understanding of dark energy, something most cosmologists accept must exist but the nature of which we know almost nothing about. And to also image exoplanets directly and study these alien worlds to tell us how common habitable worlds might be. Sadly, Nancy Roman passed away in 2018 and so won't get to see her namesake telescope completed. But she did get to see JWST while it was being built and took this pretty iconic image with it. While the spy mirrors being used for Roman didn't come with much else, no cameras or anything attached, the National Reconnaissance Office still wouldn't say what they were planned to be used for. To quote them, we're not going to talk about that. Luckily, those mirrors could be modified to study dark energy. Their shape was actually only changed by less than a millimeter in preparation for the telescope, in a process that finished in 2020. And since the mirrors had a relatively short focal length because they were built to look the relatively short distance down to Earth, this made them perfect for having a very wide field of view approximately a hundred times larger than Hubble has. But importantly, they keep the same resolution due to them having the same sized mirrors as Hubble. The mirror has been so perfectly polished that the average bump on its surface is only 1.2 nanometers, which is more than twice as smooth as the mission actually required. And if the mirror was scaled up to the size of the Earth, then these biggest bumps would be just a quarter of an inch big. Also, despite the fact that it's the same diameter as Hubble's mirror, it's less than a quarter of the weight of the Hubble mirror, thanks to developing technology for the last 30 years. Interestingly, the wide field of view also makes Roman perfect for scanning the skies for supernova explosions. And it will also be given a coronagraph to help it directly image exoplanets, something that even the brand new JWST can't do. A coronagraph blocks the light coming from stars, making it easier to spot the faint planets orbiting them. And Roman is expected to be able to image planets down to about the size of Jupiter. NASA is a bit funny because its funding has to be approved by Congress. And so to some extent, the organization must play politics just a little bit. While getting a free mirror does cut millions off the budget they needed for Roman, that's actually only a very small fraction of the total mission cost. However, reusing this spy mirror did give Roman the political momentum it needed to get continual funding, and now it's well underway and scheduled for launch on a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket in 2027 or so. It will be sent out to orbit Lagrange Point 2, that's the same place as JWST and the upcoming ESA mission Euclid the latter of which shares many goals with Roman, and so having them work in tandem should be really exciting and beneficial to both. This spot is about 1.5 million kilometers from Earth, and it's especially good because like JWST, Roman is primarily an infrared telescope. So it's good to be far away from the glow of the Earth and the moon, and its barrel-like shape will provide additional shielding from unwanted light. These infrared wavelengths will let it peer through dust to see hidden stars that we can't see in visible light. It will also become the leading survey space telescope, with its aforementioned huge field of view also making it excellent for finding exoplanets. It will look for microlensing events as planets pass in front of their stars, which is a rare event to spot, so staring at large portions of the sky in one go is essential. 
For specific targets, the coronagraph on board will then let Roman directly image some exoplanets, having the capability to see planets that are up to a billion times fainter than their stars. It will also try to image some rogue planets that don't have a star to orbit at all and are just floating through space. And generally, it's going to take a census of the types of exoplanets that we can see. Besides this coronagraph instrument, Roman's main instrument is called the Wide Field Instrument and it's made up of 18 detectors that are basically each a 16 megapixel camera. These combine to give the huge images from the light received by the spyglass. For example, check out this simulation of the type of image Roman will see. This simulates part of the Andromeda galaxy, our nearest galactic neighbor, and it starts from over 400 Hubble images in a mosaic that took three years to collect the data for. Roman will be able to produce this image using just two of its images, and each of those will only take 90 minutes to create. A huge speed upgrade, wouldn't you say? The simulation also takes into account the fact that Roman sees in infrared light, revealing many stars that were blocked to Hubble, and it highlights how good Roman will be at expanding our understanding of the local universe. If you're anything like me, you might have also become slightly obsessed with the diffraction spikes that stars produced in telescope images ever since JWST released this image that really shows off the distinctive pattern that it produces. If so, you'll have noticed in this simulation that Roman also has a unique look in the stars it produces, sporting an impressive 12 spiked pattern. In short, this comes from the unique pattern of struts that hold up Roman's secondary mirror. Telescopes like this work by collecting light in their big primary mirrors, reflecting and focusing that light onto a smaller secondary mirror, and then that secondary mirror focuses the light even more and directs it into the detectors inside the telescope. So for example here, the secondary mirror will determine whether the light collected is sent to the wide field instrument or to the coronagraph instrument. That secondary mirror has to be held in place somehow, and here it's done by these six struts. Each of the struts will produce a spike either side of it like this, and so because of the layout of those struts, we end up with the distinctive 12 spikes that will identify any Roman images we see in the future. If you want more details on how diffraction spikes are made or where they come from, I have a full video all about the JWST spikes, and the details will be the same for Roman, just with a different number of struts. So I'll link to that video up here and in the description too if you're interested. Understanding dark energy and its nature will help us understand the ultimate fate of the universe, and I think there's something really pleasing about the prospect of an old spy satellite determining our final fate. I'd love to talk more about how Roman will study dark energy in the universe, but I'm gonna save that for another video. So click up here to see that one once it's released. But in the meantime, I hope you can get excited for another upcoming awesome space mission. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.